Super Tuesday, the campaign for the Democratic presidential nomination now looks like a two-candidate race as a resurgent Joe Biden picked up state after state, winning enough delegates for a competitive race against rival Bernie Sanders, Biden ending his day in California. Now we're told well when he got to Super Tuesday, be over. Well, it may be over for the other guy. Biden winning Texas, Minnesota, Virginia, Alabama, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Arkansas, and Massachusetts, pushing home state Senator Elizabeth Warren into the third place there behind Sanders and into the... Not a fucking coup. He ain't. He, Sanders is doing the coup. <laughs> yeah, that's just a Trump strategy. Uh, 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 uh. I'm the number one stunner. Number one. Todd, you getting on the bus, man? Nah, Todd. Y'all knew Todd wasn't getting on the bus. You know what? I thought that would not be a bad rat. I could fall asleep. I'm gonna go sleep. It's a nice luxury coach. Yeah. I, I'm a that Pete that mean yesterday kept me up off my square a little bit. But I didn't dress for it. Sure you did. You, you just need a t-shirt. Oh, I said. I told so there's a t-shirt? Them, no, there's definitely not a t-shirt. I was like, <laughs> we're not going. That's the t-shirt mob. Y'all check out my voter's guide. It's like a book. 
A step by step booklet for you to get. Your game on track, not your wig pushed back. Rule number uno, never let no one know how much dough you hold. You know, chatter breed and M. M. Damn, I forgot it. I'm not feeling it. I'm. I am tired this morning, people. But I'm ready to rock, rock, rock and roll. Cause you know, once that mic kicks on, I turn. I really do know how when the artists and entertainers say, like when they used to be like, you know, I don't care what it is, but once the stage and the lights come on, then I'm on and popping. That's how I feel. Cause you can see right now, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Sonya's in there getting ready with her pre-show. She's pre-gaming. You see her right there? She's pre-gaming. Look, you see she trying to get the Beyonce to blow and like she ain't having a party. Y'all didn't see my voters guide to Neil calls it overachieving. Actually, <laughs> you'll see it when I make it the movie, then that's when it'll be overachieving. Yeah. See what I was gonna do is then intersplice all of the pictures of the candidates in between and then it turns on and it's like a commercial. I'm all for UBU. That's just maybe that's why I'm odd. What? <laughs> UBU. Now. You do things to your heart content. People take out what they want. Yeah, you know, I think that I, I'm, I'm amazed at what you can do. I need a second coffee. Is actually what I need. Y'all take a moment, share the broadcast. Ty, you grab the door. The Eisenhower Route 390 to the old post office, 33 oh, minutes. Oh, you got it. The Eisenhower 28 minutes. Can be here to downtown. Another 22 minute ride. 20 on the outbound side, and right now Lakeshore Drive. There are no major delays at the moment. It is currently 33 degrees, highs in the mid to upper 40s today. Tonight, dropping down to 31. Let's look at traffic and weather. I'm Jennifer Thompson at 6.08 on 1690 AM WVON. The views expressed on our programs are so not necessarily those of WVON, Midway up. Broadcasting Corporation, or our participating sponsors. Live from the Xfinity Studios at WVON. Oh, it's the green font. I'll fix it. The talk of Chicago, Bro, Edward, handle that business. Wake up, Chicago. Wake up, world. This is the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. 
Todd, how you feeling this morning? Oh man, Mace, I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, I haven't seen you since exactly one, two, three, four, five, six hours ago because uh, we were at the North Beverly. What is it? The North Beverly Civic Association. What is the the? I just know it's the North Beverly. I know, yeah, and we, when I when I lived in I um, yeah, I just go. We're going to North Beverly today, uh, man. So let me say big shout out to everybody over at North Beverly. Shout out to uh, Mr. Glover, the president. Uh, you know what, Todd? It was like a family reunion when I went over there yesterday. Yeah, they're good people. They are really. You know what? I go to that meeting every month. You go to that meeting every month. Well, you know, I'm a dues paying member. You're a dues paying member. I need to pay some. But not voting. Ah, I might need to pay some dues over there because you know I love North Beverly, and you know we got to start protecting our organizations. But it, it, you know, it's it, it reminds me of the I don't want the good old days. Um, it's like, but it's crazy to to see like people and time, and you know how you get. It's crazy. It was like 13 years ago when I was like North Beverly was like in the center of my life right right and to see you know the people that are still there still plugging away yeah still fighting in their community and you walk in and it's like a family reunion man it was good to see miss flowers not mary flowers because she didn't punch me miss flowers gave me a big old hug and a kiss <laughs> and then i saw uh, marie tice over there you know what i'm saying it was it was good to see all of uh my old friend man and i'm just gonna tell you miss tice is trying Miss Marie Tice? She trying to take over the judicial committee um, for what's in it for the black people? She's done some real research. But she Miss Man, but I'm gonna tell you what. When Miss Tice, you know, she used to be the chief of police for the UIC police. Right, yeah, I remember that. And Miss Tice didn't take no me man. I remember we was over there having the. It was an epic. You know what's hot? Is this a squirrel? This is a squirrel. Uh, <laughs> shout out to everybody over at the North Beverly uh, Civic Association. Thank you for having Todd and I out. It was a one-hour version of the morning show, and Todd said exactly 12 words. And I kept saying, okay, and now you, Todd. And now you, Todd. It sounds like the morning show. Uh, but it is always great to be together. All right, let me say this. Let's do this. Let's say what's up to everybody on the uh, Soul Plane this morning. What's up to Miss Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom? Jennifer, how you feeling this morning? Ready to rock and roll. All right, there it is. And Miss Sonia Escobar, she is the musical conductor of the Soul Plane. Sonia, how you feeling this morning? You feeling great? Well, I, it, I'm going to tell you what. I, it, It's like, now look, Soul Plane, we got to take off and hurry up and get back. Because, you know, after I get off the Soul Plane, I'm about to ride the Soul Bus down to Springfield. Uh, because we are going down for the hearing for HB 4865. But let me do this. I'll talk a little bit about that after we get this thing up, up, up and away. Let's get to 50,000 feet. This is the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, taking a road trip today. Road trip. Taking a road trip. I remember this like what is today's Wednesday so no I remember being on Fridays and getting ready to take a road trip in college and you be like boy I don't even want to talk about the, the pre road trip uh, festivities but boy those roads hmm mm -hmm. now I think about that let me just stop uh, we are headed down to Springfield today now um, because we just found out about it we're not we I'm just telling you there's room if you want to ride today to Springfield, we're going to be leaving at twenty, leaving from twenty nine oh seven South Wabash. That's what twenty. Uh, what is that? Twenty ninth and Wabash, twenty eighth and Wabash. I'm going to be twenty eighth when it's twenty nine oh seven. All right, it's twenty ninth and Wabash. <laughs> all, cause, all right, all right, twenty nine oh seven. Duh, twenty nine oh seven South Wabash. There's plenty of parking. We're going to feed you. Uh, there's a free bus ride, and we're going to go to Springfield. We're going to go to our hearing, meet some legislators, and then we'll be back. We'll have you back by 8.30. If you're interested in going, meet us today, 2907 South Wabash. We're starting gathering up at 9 o'clock, and we're going to ride out at 9.30. Rain or shine. Now, I'm going to tell you what, Todd. I mean, there's plenty of space on the bus, right? I just bought the bus. You know what? I was feeling some kind of way yesterday. So the What's in the Federal Black People exec board got together and got the bus and said, if you all want to come with us, you're more than welcome. And it does. you don't have to be part of What's in the Federal Black People. Right. All right? But come on down. Uh, we don't have any T-shirts for you. I'm just telling you. We said they're not. we're not coming down there to be. 
No, 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 no. See, we're not going to play the... I mean, there'll be a day for t-shirts, but we're not going down for t-shirts. There's a hearing, so we just want to go hear what they're talking about. If you want to hear, too, in person, come on, ride out with us. We gonna, That's free for... Now, Todd, I'm telling you, I was up a little late last night. So, all y'all, when we get on the bus, don't start with me. I'm getting there. I'm reclining my seat, and I'm taking me a three-hour nap. We're going to ride. That, that's... I, you know, I love... You know what? I could be a road tripper. All the time, as long as I don't got to drive. I love riding. I just hate driving. Really? I found that I don't sleep well. Oh, I sleep so good. I sleep so good. Well, on the bus, I'll fall asleep. But in the car, I tend to be up while the other person's driving. So it's like, dang, this sucks. Uh, no, nah, I can go to sleep on you in a minute now. But let me tell you. Uh, depending on the road trip. Boy, don't let me ride with my cousin. Because if I, if I met up with my cousin before I left, <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's talk Chicago 1690. Let me run through some of these headlines. Todd, Super Tuesday was really super for Joe super. Biden. Look at you. Are you back on the Joe Biden bandwagon? Is it Uncle Joe again? Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's, 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 well, he's always Uncle Joe because Uncle Joe's behaved kind of strange at times. Yes. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's going to win now. Uh, there's, Joe, no, there's no doubt in my mind. Yeah, I think it is on and popping. Uncle Joe is going to win. I hope, the only thing is, can he hold it together? Through November, well, and that see that's the see Salim had a great uh, yesterday. I was looking at Salim's comments. He was saying that uh, he thought that what's his name Bloomberg was trying to hang in there and hope that Joe Biden stumbled so bad that everybody be like, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. But it looks you know, like I think Bloomberg has so many negatives that wouldn't overcome it. Yeah, he couldn't overcome it. You know, no one. Well, people talked about it. It was, but not in the press. Like, I mean, it wasn't a big media thing. Like, he's there's no way. But yeah, people are like, nope. Uh, so after winning, I think he got the most votes in America, Samoa. He probably bought the island. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> he bought the whole island. <laughs> he probably bought the whole island and was like, look, I buy everybody's house here. Um, uh, he won. I think he won American Samoa, but they really? can't vote in the primary. They can't vote in they the general. Vote the general right. Uh, but here's the thing. So the first thing is cheaters never win, and you cannot get in the race in a 50 lap race in lap 48 and expect that everybody's gonna be like, oh yeah. So that's the first thing. Somebody won the Boston Marathon like that. Uh, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. Well, I know, but let me tell you, has to really feel like, like, like the the, the death march. Uh, Elizabeth Warren, because right. you got beat by jo by Joe by Bloomberg. Now here's the cool, here's the interesting thing: who will uh, Elizabeth Warren endorse? I, I, it, it's going to be interesting to see how this thing plays out because the Democratic Party has got to be working overtime to make sure that everybody see they can't let Bernie get any more momentum because you know it feels like Bernie just is like the 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 curmudgeon. Like he's oh, like yeah. we're good. We'll talk about it when we come back. It's Top Chicago 1690. What's his name? Bloomberg Not froze for me. To hang in there and that everybody. Are y'all froze? I'm not frozen. Me either. I can hear you talking. I can't stop. Okay, what's up, y'all? You, what do you mean you can't stop it? Well, see, that's it's time. Like real time. life. Look at John <laughs> Bolton looking like Uncle. He was looking like uh, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Thank you, Kenny Cool. We are not frozen. What's up, y'all? How y'all feeling this morning? Who is riding out to Springfield with us today? Uh-oh, Todd is over here being a cowboy. God, there I go. There I go, there I go, there I go. <sighs> Take a moment, share the broadcast. Amen. Share the broadcast. I need some. Okay, so somebody who was going needs to go get some food and get it ready for us. Um, and to the legislators, let's do this in reverse. Let's have y'all buy us lunch. I don't know how many people are going though. I don't, it's, I don't think we got like a huge crowd. I think we might have like six or eight people. 10, 15, 20. Who going? 
Uh, Angela, you can buy breakfast for everybody since you can't go. And all the people, what I love is the people that I say and I can't go, but what can I do to contribute? What I'm going to do is set up a GoFundMe. James, you going, you got to work, don't you? Dang, man. You, Patai Tiger. Oh, Lord. Y'all need to get on the bus. Alvin E. Norton, what's up? You know what? Erica, you tripping. You and Brian need to get on the bus. That's all right, y'all shady. It's okay. I see how y'all do. And we got TV screens. We might have to watch Purple Rain on the ride down. You know what I was thinking? I want to go to Louisville. 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 I want to go to Louisville. Uh, I think it's still too cold, though. But, man, have you been to 4th Street Live? And, you know, I've only driven past Louisville on the way to Atlanta. Never got out. I did say he was going to win American Samoa yesterday, didn't I? I did say you called that. that one. I'm a pontificator. What up, Shakira? See? This is what I was telling you. The reason why our, our, we don't protest well is because the people in our organization go to work. <laughs> which we're going to talk about today. But don't There's a date. Oh, baby, I love your ways every day. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Sorry, Got my co-host, George Trojan. So on your fact check, uh, was that an a, a African-American group? Who was it? No, they're not African-American. No, nah, I wasn't, Todd. Then how, how could Maze be happy? He was all over me for liking UB40. You Come know I'm not. On, uh, uh, I like consistent. Red, red, what? I like That's that. That's not their best song. I know, but you know, see, I grew up in Bolingbrook, so that was white. That was reggae to me at first. I didn't even know about Bob Marley, but I sure knew about UB40. Red, red, red. Who is that? Who is this right here? Big Mount. I, they had like one song. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's why I didn't know who it was. I, it's it, just one. Just one. All right. Travel to your 80s. Man, travel to your 80s. So they sing 30 songs and then you don't know nothing. And then you hear your one song and everybody goes crazy. Yeah, exactly. Woo! That was my jam. If you're not drunk by that time. <laughs> well, that's the whole point. That's what you <laughs> use all those other songs for. So that that last song means so much to you. All right. All right this is the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Don't forget, if you want to rock and roll with us today um, and go down to Springfield, uh, we are going to watch the testimony of Fort House Bill 4865. There is a hearing today, uh, the Western for the Black People Bill, uh, advanced by State Representative Kim Buckner. Shout out to all of the black legislators that are signing on. But guys, I do I want to let you know that they placed this in an all-white committee with the exception of uh, State Representative Justin Slaughter, uh, who's the vice chairman of the committee, which in my estimation, Todd, uh, Todd with... Justin being the vice chair of the committee, right? Mm -hmm. He should be able to convince the members to let it get to the floor to get a vote. I mean, I'm saying you're the vice chair of the committee. You got to be. Able you know, to being the vice chair, you know, it's, 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 it's not quite the. It's not the. It's not the. It's not the cat's meow. No, no. You know, <laughs> it's like being. It's like being the cat. Somebody pets you. So you can go over there. I don't appreciate this, Todd. The chairman. You're killing. Yeah. The chair. Well, we need to Who's tell the him. Oh, you know what? I got to dig that up. I didn't look at that. I was so busy trying to figure out how we could get the bus. Well, actually, let me send a big shout out to Tamiko Holt, John Drea Holt, and Nidra Williams. Because yesterday, when I had my inkling to think about going down here, by the time I got out of my meetings, you know how you got a good idea and then you forgot you got work to do? Yeah. And then you, by the time I got out of my meetings, uh, 
tied. It was they had the bus, they had everything ready to go. Now the only thing I didn't say was the food, but we can figure the food out. Somebody could be getting the food together now. Mm-hmm. I think McDonald's should have sponsored our bus trip, our food. You know what? You get on the phone, Todd. So while you go, you call Derek Taylor. Actually, we should have people just send us. You call Derek Taylor and say, Derek, call down there to the McDonald's hotline and take care of the, uh, the what's in the for the black people. You know, McDonald's hotline. you know, they got the, the Ronald McDonald phone. You know, like, you know, they don't got, a, they don't got like a, a clown line or Ronald. A clown line? Mm. You, Todd, you got work to do. All right. So look, it's Talk Chicago 1690. Uh, so we're going to talk about Super yeah, Tuesday. Uh, uh, uh. Pot of grits. <laughs> oh, some grits. Yeah, see, what if McDonald's had yeah, the grits? grits? Don't, don't travel well. Oh, yeah, but if they had like the hot grits with the cheese and the bacon, oh, just man, imagine we stuff. was getting on the bus and it was like McDonald's was like, y'all go fight for the black people and eat a hearty meal. Like McDonald's could sponsor you feel like a movie. On the airplane, where you know they'd have that thick thing and you grab one and you just get on. That'd what, be nice. What plane was that? Well, you know, I have a phone like. Yeah, yeah, been in a while. <laughs> no, nah, they be like, put your credit card up. You can't even get it. You cannot even get the cookies. Let, let, you can't even get the cookies without the credit card. These oh, days. All right. Um, hey, Todd. Uh, Shamari Leggett, the trial for the shooting of Commander Paul Bauer. Yeah. Did you see he claimed self defense? Self defense. Oh, well, here's what I did think was interesting. Well, Bauer was a year behind me at St. Ignatius. I didn't know him, but. Lord have mercy. Okay, so let me tell you what I was just thinking. I think, first of all, the guy, I mean, the story he told made a little sense. He was like. Hold on. Hold on, Maze. Yes. The man had like a pound of heroin and something else. He was a drug dealer. They admitted it. That's right. He was fighting and he was. So he deserved what he got? Well. No, he deserved what he got. He, oh, he got was shot. Did. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> no, the commander didn't deserve to get shot just because you wanted to run away. Once okay. you got caught, you give up if you're just a, a drug dealer. It's not like you shot somebody. Mm-hmm. But now he shot somebody. You know, he said, oh boy, grab him up. Chair, he should get the chair. He said he saw out. him taking a leak. And he grabbed, he had his overcoat on, and he snatched him up. And dude was like, who do you think you are snatching me up? And he didn't know he was a cop. And so he like... Hey man, I'm just tell you. That's how I, I told you. That's how I made America's Wildest Police videos. Cause a cop grabbed me and I didn't realize it was a cop. And, and I, I just took a big old healthy swing. Man, the guy's lying right off the bat. <laughs> because we know the reason he grabbed him is because the other cops were trying to catch him. <laughs> okay, I'm just you know, I was trying to help. I cannot. Out. No, I cannot help this brother. <laughs> All right. Love uh, we, uh, <laughs> no, he won't. first of all, Joliet is a processing center now. No one loves Joliet anymore. He loves Stateville. Stateville is like a is a haunted house now. <laughs> they go like <laughs> you they go. go <laughs> uh, they go. They, hey man, this this jail thing is not like the thing anymore. Huh. And like they send them way downstate so that they can ticket you every county. So as, white as, as you, try as you travel there, mm-hmm. then you find that a cheeseburger costs. Four hundred dollars in this <laughs> small town. That when you go in to eat because you've traveled and you're scared to stop, and the gas station is now seven dollars. And so if you decide you want to call your loved one, it's only ten dollars a minute. You mean like when we stopped in Marion and there were all these new hotels? <laughs> yeah. Like wow, right. where did this come from? Uh, this is so you can get your overnight visit. Mm-hmm. And then you know, then what the they got a hook up at the jail so they make it where you can't go the first day. Uh-huh. So you spend the night. You stay at the hotel. It's a whole circular racket. Ooh. It's like they got a racket. That's why. Remember when they was doing the rap videos to get the prisons? Remember when they was like competition to get the prison? Oh yeah, most definitely. Man, downstate was like, we, what we do if we can't lock up the colors? It's really well, it's sad to say, but yes. Um, Todd, did you see? Uh, did you see Chris Matthews uh, from uh, you know from TV got white? Well, at first, I saw something. And it was like Chris Matthews got fired. He resigned. And yeah, and then like three hours later, they started saying he resigned. He resigned because of Me Too again. He was like, "Hey man, I'm oh, just." So he got fired. Yeah, but flirting. <laughs> he was <laughs> flirting. Um, the one was one of the things that he said to a lady was, "Oh, when she was in the makeup chairs, oh, you're so beautiful. Um, how, why hasn't anyone fallen in, taken you away or fallen in love with you yet?" I mean, I think that's, that's like just a line. I think it was cornball line, but that they turned it into a. Look at Sonia's around here. Just say. And then he said something. He stood between her and the mirror and said, oh, to the makeup artist, when you when she leaves, take that makeup off. I don't want anybody else to see her like that. 
fifty million dollars. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's just. I'm just like, telling you, and it's like now, man. I'm uh-huh, just okay. Right, I'm just telling you. Um, I mm, I just know a lot that's of people. So, kinda, you know, I'm not going out with you, right? <laughs> that's right. all that is. Right, but, but no, well, no, that's not. Well, because I, everyone was appalled, they couldn't believe it. She felt completely, and I'm 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 not minimizing. Who anything. are we if we don't have corny lines? Well, I'm just gonna say. They I mean, are like I mean, the men, all the women gonna be, be mad. Such, I don't know. But I'm just saying, at the at the at some, if do you know if I if everybody that flirted with my wife, seriously, like seriously, I'll it, mm, I'm just saying, a lot of y'all will be fired. I'm just telling you. Remember, I told you, like I consider this flirting, right? Oh my God, your wife is so beautiful. For the fifteenth time. That means they're flirting with you. The no, for the fifteenth. <laughs> no, they're flirting. No, they're telling me, boy, if you wasn't here, if I thought I could, I'd kill a fuzzle, cousin. I don't be no, like. That's not flirting. That's trying to start a fight. They're exactly, <laughs> but people don't seem to understand that. Uh-huh. You know, it's like, duh, like really? You know, right. you tell me that. Like, every, I want to hear that. Right, right. right. Like I, I know that's why I won. Mm-hmm. It's up, Chicago, sixteen ninety. We'll be back after traffic and the weather. Some news too. <laughs> Take a moment, share the broadcast. Yeah, that's like, that's like their that that's not flirting. That's them being like, I would flirt if I could, <laughs> but I know that you're an asshole and will say something about it. <laughs> and I've decided that I'm not. Oh, I've decided I'm gonna talk about stuff. Oh, I also, man. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh. You know what I want to talk about? So Keith Harris posted um, yesterday. He, I, well, you know, I wake up in the morning, and so when I wake up in the morning, like part of my morning routine, as as part of my regularity, is as I am doing my morning thought process, my morning meditations. I generally scroll through Facebook, and a lot of posts come up. And you know, sometimes they give me inspiration, um, and I feel like Keith's post was very germane to our meeting yesterday. Um, He was like, when he worked in the alderman's office, he was saying that a lot of people who were in, in, a lot of people who were complaining about people in the projects were complaining about who complained, who called the office complaining about people in the projects are now screaming black power. And I thought that was interesting Especially timed with the meeting that we went to yesterday, right? Because I wonder who, how do we address the social ills in our community, right? Like, there are negative elements in our community that I feel like we try to glorify. Like we try to act like yeah. it. Like I don't necessarily feel like the projects as they evolve, not the people, but the environment that they evolve to, led to productive outcomes for most of their citizens. And I do think that they did change some of the neighborhoods. Now, I wasn't, I didn't answer calls and I wouldn't call the office and talk to the alderman about people who lived in the projects because I didn't live there, right? I mean, that wasn't my neighborhood. I'm not gonna say that wasn't my neighborhood, but I would never call. I would just be like, yo. Um, But I do think there is a real challenge when we act like, well not act like, when we don't recognize that our community is segmented and we have some issues that we have to address. Right? Like All is not well. Do well, Okay, so if you live in a neighborhood, a, a stable middle class neighborhood What, how do you respond 
when your neighbors don't share the same values as you. And I'm talking about, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about like basic values of no hang, you know, like the, the neighborhood rules. Right? Like, or the, the tenant, don't, they've never really seen a neighborhood, a functioning positive neighborhood. How do you deal with that? Right? So if you never had a lawnmower, and then we put you in a place where you got to cut your, cut the grass, but you moved in and you never even bought a lawnmower, how do you address that? And so, if, if, if you never, if a jacked up front screen door is okay with you, where do you address that? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, how do we address? And then, like, think about. So, is well, Avalon that Park? Is where a, block clubs come in. But again, the people who are in the block club are going to usually be the people complaining about the people who just moved in and screwing stuff and and taking the neighborhood down. You know what? I would think well, I could be wrong. You know, a lot of a lot of in our middle class area, there's a lot of senior people. But uh, I would say that there's a lot of people like, look, man, if you can't uh, mow, if you don't have a lawnmower, you can use mine. I, I, I know there's a lot of people who would, who would do that. Would, but if the person... But you have to come, but, you know, you have to make a step to, I need help. But if you... There's people who, want, who would help you because they don't want to... They don't want they... Like, I, I would cut my neighbor's grass. If my neighbor didn't cut their grass after a week, just because... His fleas was coming to my neighborhood. I mean, his like it. When you look down the block, nobody sees your good cut grass. They just see the grass that's jacked, yeah. and it's next to your house, and it makes you. Yes. Three lines. Three lines. Three lines. I watched the movie Black Privilege. It addressed it sort of. It didn't solve it. Street love. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co host. To all Stroger and Ty, you know it's time for the social media question of the day. Hey, man, we went to North Beverly. What? Okay, did somebody find out the North Beverly Civic Association? Until you tell me something different, that's what it is. Now, Mr. Glover is probably up listening. Nah, he probably ain't. He probably, he probably don't start till 8 o'clock because he retired now. You know, I love when people be like, man, I used to listen to you every day. Then they be like, but then I retired. So now I listen to you when I wake up. I'll be like, you don't get up. Uh, but Todd, we were at the North Beverly Civic Association, and I was, I was thinking about when I was there yesterday, um, living. I didn't live in 18th. I mean, I lived in the 18th where I was the chief of staff in the 18th ward. And you know, the North Beverly uh, Civic Association. Um, I feel like it, it, it is representative of the question that I want to talk about today. Mm-hmm. So I was, you know, in the mornings I get up, and when I get up, you know, part of my morning routine is to get up, turn off the alarm, go in the bathroom, I take a seat on my throne, and then I read Facebook. And then in my news feed, a lot of times stuff comes up, and I'd be like, oh, that's a good topic. That's something I could use today on the show. And so one of my friends, Keith Harris, uh, you know, Keith Harris from Inglewood, right? So Keith. Used to, I met Keith working in a, in a ward office one time in the sixth ward office, and Keith was rem, was l- not reminiscing but lamenting that not lamenting. He posted that while he was in the ward office, a lot of people screaming "Black Power Now" were complaining about the people in the projects, right? And it was it got me to thinking, Todd, because I feel like. Those two things aren't mutually exclusive, right? Like, what I mean is, 
what I want to know is how do we address the social ills in our community? Like legitimately address them and deal with them. I feel like sometimes we glorify um not the most positive comp components of our community. Like I'm going to tell you that as the 18th Ward Chief of Staff, right? I was the I sat in the middle of a bunch of middle class government based workers who went to work, had houses, all that stuff, and it was in the middle of black people. Right. Yeah. Well, the, I think that's the I think that's more representative of the black folks that I know than kind of some of the other elements. And I want to make yeah. sure I'm I'm couching this right cuz I don't want to trip out. But that's also very close to the neighborhood where uh what's the little boy Tyshawn Lee got killed where it we were in the middle of a clash. The neighborhoods were clashing, yeah. right? What was happening was you had all these solidly middle class people, but then there were a lot of other people who couldn't hold on to their homes. And so they became Section 8 or, and at the same time, simultaneously, the projects had come down. Yeah. And I don't know if it was real or this was a false narrative, but you tended to be able to identify people who moved into the neighborhood and probably did not have the same background. Right. Can I say it that way? Right? So... I would say they did not necessarily ever have to cut their grass. They weren't in a competition to have the nicest hedges and the nicest, right? And they didn't necessarily see the same things that the other people saw that lived their tradition. Yes. And there did used to be a lot of calls and a lot of people complaining and saying, look, man, I didn't move over here for, my, for this to happen to me. Yeah. But how do you address that? Like, honestly, and did that really... Well, let me ask a question. Was that real or was that imaginary? And if it was real, then how do we as black people address it? Right? Because uh, how do we address it? So the social media question of the day is, how do we honestly address the ills of black society? Right? Like, I don't think that Honestly, I don't think that there are trucks that I don't think that white people drive through black neighborhoods and be like, ooh, let me throw the trash out. I don't either. Even though I think some people <laughs> actually do, I don't think uh, I don't think that's true. No. So, Todd, help me out. Y'all give us a call. 312-374-8130. Well, you know, I go to at least one uh, one beat meeting a, a month and Pretty much an issue like that will come up, I would say, at least once a month. It might be the same person, it's just a re reoccurring issue. Uh, they will say, look, there's some people on the block, uh, they're hanging out in front, they're not doing uh, anything, there's always traffic, there's a lot of concern about that house. And sometimes, it's, it's more than concern, it's almost like conflict. They know I, I'm looking. And they look at me back and, you know, they don't want you messing in what they think is their business. So it can be uh, it can be nasty, but we see it all over the middle class neighborhoods. So how do you address it? Honestly, right? Like, so... Because so, everybody doesn't want to hear from you. Uh, well, that's my point. So, and I think, like, again, then you become the bougie Negro if you want to have a nice... If you just want to keep your stuff up. Right? And I don't know how we... How do you deal with that? Right? Because I feel like when I was reading it, it's like it reminds... It, not just that, but I feel like there's this... Like there's this longing for the glory days that weren't really glorious. Like I don't... I, I want to make sure I'm 100%... I, I had some glorious days. I had some glorious days I mean, too. you tell me there were... There were uh... You, know. you had some corny games. We had some what the TDs in our neighborhood, <laughs> and, I, and you're right. I know they were there, but there was. Uh, I think I may have mentioned this before. Uh, there was a, a young lady from New Orleans who came and went to the University of Chicago. And, you know, they do a lot of uh, social work and, and, you know, and see. And she was getting her masters, and she did a paper on our neighborhood. 
and it was called uh, Black Picket Fences. She, she did a research paper, then she made it into a book. And I read it, and uh, she detailed, because she, uh, she volunteered at the ward, and, and uh, did some, uh, we did some stuff at Avalon Park with the kids and such, and she detailed how there was a gang element in our neighborhood, but there was also a gang leader, and he kept things relatively calm. So I grew up, and there were people you knew who were not on what you thought was a square, but there wasn't any real problem. Well, see, I think like, like getting your pirate hat smashed. <laughs> <laughs> I always think like so that you talk about the order. I think that there was some sort of semblance of order, etc. Um, but I do wonder, like, Ty, how do you address it? Like, I do feel like there is an element. There is a, com and I don't want to put it on the projects, but I feel like there's a, like, I feel like there's a difference between people who don't have money and people who are destructive. If you look across the world, I think that we would find uh, except in maybe places like China where, you know, uh, they tend to treat you very harshly if you step out of the line, that uh, the poor people, the children, tend to band together uh, because the children are generally the, the largest group. And so there's more poor children than there are poor adults. They band together and they start doing criminal activities. And that's what we see in our neighborhoods. Uh, of course, they have leaders, and the leaders are older, but they're still pretty much on their own, and that's why we've got this kind of wild, wild west thing going on. All right, well, let's talk about it when we come back. I see y'all got the phone lines lit up, 312-374-8130. How do we honestly address the ills of black society? Like, I mean, Todd, I, I almost feel like there's a disdain for black folks that are trying to achieve the American dream. Now, don't get it twisted. I know that the world and all that stuff. But, Ty, can I tell you, there, there, there is some level of satisfaction, contentment in pulling up to your house, pulling in your driveway, your grass is cut, There's no, your neighbors, the birds are tweeting, the, you can sit out in your backyard and not worry about nothing, you ain't got the work. There is something to that. And right. I feel like people... Like, I almost feel like, in some cases, that's the negative. Like, if you're trying to get to that, then you're the problem. And I, I it's it's crazy to me sometimes. Let's talk about it when we come back. 312-374-8130. More of the morning show with May Jackson. Um, I do think it was addressed in Black Privilege. But, I mean, if it's a character issue, it's usually a multi-generational character issue. See, I don't feel like, see, I don't, I mean, I think there's an element that we try to act like is not an element. And it's like, I know people who don't have the night, the richest crib, but it's clean. I knew people who lived in Cabrini Green who took care of their yard. Like, you know, like. If I'm at my house, Ty, I don't walk like, and I'm walking up to the path, and there's four, there's four townhouses before you get to mine, mm -hmm. and there's trash. You know what I do? Pick it up. Pick it up. Yeah. Even if it ain't in my yard, because eventually it's gonna blow in my yard. Right. We're all connected. No, and I uh. Man, I think that you have people in every neighborhood that keep their stuff up. But there's also people that come to your neighborhood that don't take care of your stuff. My parents used to always talk about the people that came to your house and tore up your toys and broke your stuff. Don't let nobody come to your house and break your stuff. So we got, you can leave that open. You can leave that open. Yeah, please. Um, it's like, in my estimation, it's like, I think if somebody calls the alderman's office and they're complaining, they're not complaining about the people in the projects. They're complaining about what the people in the projects are doing. Right? Right. If you, if you cut your grass and 
You don't have people smoking bees on the front porch, right? You probably nobody's gonna be if you do what the neighborhood does. Or stand on the front porch to cursing and swearing or fighting and or every uh, you know every week there's some kind of fight out front with girlfriend and you or something. Whoa, man. No. I just don't want that in my neighborhood. <laughs> well, I mean I don't yeah. I think I told Maze I had to go out and, and shovel up a diaper once I was sitting out in the street. I don't know whose diaper that was. Right. No, I mean I like I just feel like we're glorifying um I feel like why well, what well, kind of like I feel like there's there's something wrong almost if you want to if you want to keep your shit up and it's like sometimes you can't go knock on the neighbor's door right and so you look to the city to be like man the grass is 12 inches if they I can't walk past 12 inches of grass I can't I can't like once the grass is start doing like this and there's ones that don't look like they I gotta go cut now when I got tired of that you know what I did I went to a place where in agreement they cut the grass but If you know, like, I think there's so many people that don't even know how to do basic handiwork. So until it all the way dies, come on, hit that door. And why? In the gambler spot and heard the intricate plot. A niggas wanna stick me like that fly paper neighbor. Slow down, love, peace, chill, drop the caper. On the hill up in Brownsville that you roll dice with. Yeah, my nigga, frame up and prosper. You are, <laughs> you are tuned into the Top of Chicago, sixteen ninety AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host Todd Stroger, and we are talking about um, how do we address the ills of Black society. I was checking out my man Keith Harris's uh, Facebook this morning. Uh, you know, I was sitting on my royal throne, getting ready, contemplating what the day's show would look like. And he brought up a really good point. Um, and Todd, I thought it was exempl exemplified by yesterday when we were at North Beverly, which was a bunch of black middle class homeowners who were actively involved in their community. Mm -hmm. Who I feel like nobody ever talks about. When we turn on and we talk about the police shootings and the, all the stuff and the violence and how bad the police are and all that stuff, there is a whole level of people Actually, to me, the Joe Biden voters uh -huh. who are not reflected in any conversations, most of the conversations. It's like it's the bourgeois elite, rich people who ain't doing nothing, or it's the poor and we're not taking care of our... Oh, yeah, no, there's, there's, there's a ton of people who feel that the, the middle is being uh, ignored. Like, you know, there used to be a caller who would call in all the time and say, man, I don't care, and yeah. Uh, and I'm repeating <laughs> I don't care about people coming back from prison. What about people who were here and haven't met, <laughs> made any problems or, 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 or fallen? How come we can't get help? Well, see, that's the thing. It's like, it's that I feel like the, remember I tell you, I feel like the narrative has been hijacked. Sonia, I want you to get um, juicy. And I want you to play the part where he says, this goes out to everybody when I was just trying to feed my daughter. Because I, I love this song. But I feel like it is like, it is like this warped, it's part of the warp, and I love Biggie, and I love the song, but if you think about the song Juicy, right, and you think about how he opens it up, uh, Sonya, play Juicy, play the opening to it. Uh, we're going to put, you ready? Stop. This is this is for all the people who called the police on me when I was hustling in front of their house while I was trying because I was just trying to feed my daughter. So now you know there was a job at McDonald's and Burger King. No, uh, uh, I, I, I would people you would know. 
be Cal being Calvin, that was not the way to go. But I think that song is reflective of this sort of like Robin Hood mentality, like hustling in front of my house because you trying to feed your daughter. And so all of that that brings and then you gonna you hustle in front of my house and then go to your crib. Right. And when everybody come back, they looking. And so the people did call and say, uh, excuse me. I lived in this neighborhood for the last 30 years and now there are people driving around in circles on my block. And right, I tried to go up my steps to my house and there were people sitting on my steps. Exactly. And they looked at me like I was crazy. And occasionally somebody wants to take their shot at somebody who's standing in front of your house. Right. So, you know, now you're, you're, you know your safety is in danger. Don't get near the window. Right. And it's funny. I'm looking at everybody saying, sell in front of your own house. Remember, he, uh, J, uh, Biggie also said uh, in the Ten Crack Commandments, Ten Crack Commandments, never sell crack where you lay your head at. Right? So go hustle in front of your crib. And it was right. funny. Destroy my house. <laughs> That's right. Let me go to the phone lines. Let me start with Cell. Cell, you're on the top of Chicago, 1690. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Cell, why you sound so happy when I'm talking about this? Oh, man. Listen, listen, listen. Prayer changes things, Mace. I've been praying for you, boy, and it's working. I mean, it's working. You taking that mind of yours and you doing what you're supposed to be doing. Going straight to the nitty gritty about this shit in our community we've got to first of all recognize just how, how how filthy we are filth as it relates to ignorance first of all and the way you first of all clean that up is to learn something Dr. Francis Quest Wilson said that we as a people have a high tolerance for filth and filth and filth hmm. Is the is is the reason for so many of our social ills? That's one of the reasons, the main reasons why I'm into what I'm into because I know living in a clean environment changes your attitude, it changes your respect that you have for yourself, your self-esteem. Everything ugly that happens in our community is related to the high tolerance that we have for it. It's just that simple. You say, what can we do? Come and join me in a march down in City Hall petitioning for me to have a corner office with street and sand, with unfettered authority to clean up our black communities to my satisfaction. Ooh. I don't play around with filth. I know that it is our devil. And the longer we tolerate it, the longer we're going to live in this type of hell. We go around screaming and talking about, oh, it takes a community, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, damn it. A clean village does it better. Mm. Does it better. You, our children, if you get out there and, and follow them to school, see how much trash and garbage they pass by. They don't know the effect that it's having on their mind. They don't. Mm. But you know who knows? The Center for Disease Control, the American Medical Association, how, uh, uh, Harvard University, the University of Pennsylvania have all come out with studies saying that not only will filth determine the quality of life you have while you are alive, but it will also determine how long you live. I've been saying this for the longest. So now I, I got some credentials behind me. So you, you always have some credentials behind you. Let me just be clear, brother. I know that it's sometimes, and I, and I can't imagine with your fight, because I know what I feel like, but I'm going to tell you, my brother, you ain't fighting in vain. And I just think we got to be real with ourselves. It's like, I think what we have normalized is abnormal. We have abnormal, it is abnormal, Todd. It's like, and I don't even think we even know it in some cases. I totally agree with you. Hey, I mean, I think if, you, if you're so used to walking past a, a rundown situation, it becomes your norm. You, and that's why when you go somewhere else and you see them, you be like, look at these good white folks. No, but it's, it's not all the government. Some of them say, I, I, I want to keep my house nice. Right. But if you don't own it, if you don't understand property value, if you don't understand how all of that works together, then you don't know. And I'm just saying, hey, y'all, let's, let's, let's stop looking for an excuse. I'll take your calls when we come back to Talk Chicago 1690. The Talk of Chicago and the Voice of the Nation, 1690 WVO.
No, I mean, I think that people, like my mother, like if you don't know that you're wallowing in filth, like, like, you know what, man? It's like so many days that people, I don't let people come over because we didn't clean the house. Right. Like, the house isn't clean. Like, and then there's people that let me come in their house and I'd be like, did you know I was coming? Right? Like, I'd be like, you can't even come in the crib. My mama, man, please. Then you be in a terrace, but then the thing is, Mario, they'll shoot your crib back up for sitting on your porch. They mad at you for sitting on your porch. I'm just saying to y'all, it's like <laughs> people want to have some shit. And if you know what your if you know what your house and your thing's supposed to look like, right? You you believe that there's some worth in your in your property. Do you know? I mean, my mama vacuumed three times a day. I'd be like, look. What, what you, it, man, can I can't tell you I used to hate. Remember, I used to have to pick up sticks in the wintertime when it, when you couldn't go pick up sticks, you had to pick up the specks on the carpet. No, seriously. <laughs> no, seriously. Y'all think I'm joking? It'd be like, y'all just vacuum. They'd be like, now nah, you go back and pick up the specks. No, Wait, you mean you want me to get on my hands and knees for an hour and a half and pick up the specks, white specks? On this royal blue carpet, on this navy blue carpet, that's what you want me to do. My little Hebrew slave. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, when your mom would be like, "Hey, come here. You be in your room, minding your business. Yes, turn the channel. <laughs> Is that the remote you got right there? Yeah, yeah. but I want you yeah, to. Turn. I do some things like that too. <laughs> if I see the kids close, hey, 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 come here. <laughs> here, take this kid. <laughs> I, I do that to my son. I didn't do it to my line, but I'm I'm enjoying doing it to my son. And now, cause he's trying to get ready to start driving, oh, yeah. so he like really extra on the. I be like, hey, 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 go go run down to the. It's funny, man. I used to have to pick up the specs on the carpet. I used to be like, for real, for real. I can't go outside till I pick up the specs on the carpet. The specs, and then the damn vacuum cleaner had an exhaust. Right? Before we had y'all we had a rainbow vacuum cleaner. Can I tell you, I think I think my mom is addicted to vacuum cleaners. Mm -hmm. She get a new vacuum cleaner at least once a year. She'd be like, I came up. But Tanil, do you remember the rainbow vacuum cleaner? Do you remember that? I'll never forget this dude knocked on our door. Oh, your mother brought a, a, a vacuum from the door door? Yes. <laughs> it was the rainbow vacuum. He shows up. I think this bad boy was a couple hundred. I mean, it was expensive. Yeah. And you put water in the bottom because it stopped. Yeah, and they, and it's, you know about the rainbow? I mean, I don't know that that brand, but I know that the ones. Uh, were door to door? No, the water. And door to door, too. It's expensive because, you know, they got to make some money. But when you use water, yeah, that's expensive. Man, and it was, I hated it. But what it basically did, I liked it because I didn't have to pick up the specs. Because the other one had an exhaust. This, the exhaust went through the water, so all the dust was caught in the water. But the thing about it was, you had to fill it with water, and then you had to empty it. Oh, yeah, somebody got to do that. And it was the nastiest, and then you had to sort the string. Oh, it was just the worst. Oh, my God, it was just the Sounds worst. Sounds like Warren, uh, working at the uh, Metropolitan Water Rack. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but my mom loves vacuums. Um, she got, and my mom be buying these. She knows the brand. She like this brand of vacuum. Like you know, she'd be excited about vacuum cleaners. Mm -hmm. Like my mom would clean the house like six one. times. My, my mom got a one mom. bedroom, and that. Uh, but she been upgrade. Ah, she finna upgrade. Call me. I'm ready, ready for it to get the upgrade. But she um. Oh, Carol, you got a rainbow still? I didn't even know they still made those bad boys. I hated the rainbow though. I swear I hated that damn vacuum cleaner. Well, that's because you were working. Yeah, I, I don't think I did my children right. Like, let me tell you, my niece Reagan, Reagan could probably build a house, bro. Because Reagan, Tanil would be like, at three, Reagan, clean up the crib. <laughs> Not in an abusive way, I just want to be clear. But Reagan, like, Shoot, Reagan could be my executive assistant. She know how to do Facebook. She know how to do all the social media. She done started her own business. Like some days I'd be like, Lord, 
Lord, my niece, she be looking at her cousins like, uh, y'all don't know how to do this? They be looking like, wait, what? So Reagan be like, uh, come on, y'all, it's time to go. Auntie Neil be like, <laughs> Auntie Neil be like, Reagan got that? I be like, Lord, I failed. <laughs> And you gotta schedule an in home demonstration. This is expensive. What? With the rainbow. Uh, oh, they still got them? Oh, God, yes. How much is it? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't really say. They're just trying to get me there. They got my mom because they said it would help with my asthma. That's exactly, that's the first thing they really say. Hey, hey, Todd. Veronica Taylor says she called Alderman Brooklyn's office and told him about the trash in her alley that blows in our lawn is from the Family Dollar and others. Could you follow up on that? Please? Yeah, uh, what Family Dollar? Uh, Veronica, could you uh, tell Todd or tell us, and we'll get that get on top of that. Also have, uh, she can also have the... Uh, the ward soup was at the meeting yesterday. You should have came, Veronica. Yeah. V-Ron, you still live on the south side? I thought you was probably a down twine dweller by now. She can have his number. It's hard as hell. I battle anybody. I don't care. You tell. I excel. They all fail. Rock the bells. I've been waiting and debating for oh so long. Been waiting for mother for a Cool J song. Rock the bells. You are tuned into the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host to our show. But Todd, you know how we do at the top of the hour. Gotta say what's up to the WVOM Morning Show team. What's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, as well as Miss Sonia Escobar. She is the musical conductor of the soul playing. Todd, we are gonna be talking about Super Tuesday, but before we do, I'm gonna take your calls. I uh, want to remind everybody, if you uh, if you don't got nothing to do, if you're not working today um, and you want to join us, we are going to be departing from 2907 South Wabash. There is parking, 2907 South Wabash, free road trip with us to Springfield, right? Springfield, Illinois for House Bill 4865, sponsored by uh, Kim Buckner. We want to get black folks out, the people of color and minority bucket and get our own space. Now, it'll be lunch. Once we get there. And we're going to go to the hearing. Y'all can see the Capitol. And then we're going to be bounce, bounce back. You'll be back here by 8.30. The ride is free, but we want you to join with us if you have time today. I know it was short notice, but there is, uh, we got a luxury, nice, comfortable bus. I'm going to put my seat back and I'm going to go. Y'all don't, don't my, I don't have my kids there to hit me when I snore. Because <laughs> like when I go to the movies, oh yeah, yeah. my son be like, dad, because I be like, yeah. Don't like if it's a, like if we go I like some movies I just plan to go to sleep in. I just exactly. Play. I just be like I did that in Honey We Shrunk the Kids. <laughs> I did I, for Jumanji. I did that this weekend. <laughs> we went to see Jumanji this weekend, and after I realized, oh, yeah, I, yeah did when, you see it? I saw it saw me. <laughs> Cause I'm telling you, once you once I get those reclining comfy seats and you can hit the button and it's just like it'd be like and it's dark mm -hmm. nice and cool you'd be like you know what tell me about it in the end alright that's what happened to me in Rogue One and I actually wanted to see the movie but I just could not stay away man I'm, man, Star Wars movies sometimes you got to there was a moment where they had a little love man it was a little love no I agree with that there was a love it like the first three was the bangers then it kind of lulled they came back towards the end you know what I'm saying I was a little um, 
it was I wasn't used to um, seeing black Star Wars people besides Darth Vader. But <laughs> okay, hey y'all, stop Chicago sixteen ninety. But before we go, how we're gonna talk to social media question today? How do we honestly address the social ills in our community? Because I don't really want to diss nobody, but at the same time, I don't know. Like I don't even know if we know what n normal is, mm -hmm. or like, th is there a black normal maybe? Like, do we? Like, I almost feel like when you try to take care of your stuff, people say, stop acting white. Hmm. Let me go to the phone lines. Let me go to Tamiko, president of What's In It for the Black People. Uh-oh, I think I might be in trouble because I always get it when we have these conversations. What's up, sis? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Tasha, how you doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Early this morning. Tired is tired. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> So did you know that I was the Say that one more time. And the owner of this building cannot accuse me. If anything, he can accuse me of is taking care of his own property. Let's talk about all the elements. As a matter of fact, we should make this a You breaking up. You gotta get somewhere to station. Yeah, Tamiko, you gotta go find Tamiko, go find some bars. I'm not saying this in a bad way. Go find some bars and call back and we'll take it. Is this better? Okay, I'm gonna call back. Okay. Let's go to Teresa. Teresa, you're on top of Chicago. Teresa, are you going? Uh-oh. We're going to go to Art, because I know Art finna check all y'all. Go ahead, Art. Hey, what's going on, young man? <laughs> what's up, what's Art? What's going on, young man, to Brother Todd? Uh, real quick, it's all about community codes of conduct and family values. And the first code of conduct should be keep your neighborhood, your community clean. That's for Brother Sal. And you said how? By any means necessary. I'll leave you with that. May God continue to bless. Hey, man, Art, like, you don't pick up that paper, I'm going to shoot you and your mom. You know what? One thing I do remember from my childhood, and this is really my childhood because this was under uh, Richard J. Daly, and he died. I was in eighth grade, is that there was a campaign, and I can't remember the slogan, but it was all about keeping the city clean. Uh, so, you know, I think cities always fight this problem and the hard part is, is getting people to buy in that this is a, a, a group effort. Let me ask right. Let me ask you a question. D -d Just real quick. If you're driving through a city and everybody was in the house, could you tell where the black neighborhood was? Yeah, Martin Luther King Drive. Okay. <laughs> okay, and there's no King Drive. Oh, okay. Could you tell, do you think you could identify, could you drive through, could you drive through a city, right? Say it, you say there's like a street that goes all the way straight through any city. Well, I could, <laughs> but I, 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 well, I would think I could, but, but that's not always true because, you know, the South is really different. But I would say because of the businesses that are in the, the neighborhood, mm -hmm. generally give you an indication or more, I guess it's more businesses that are in the neighborhood give you an indication that this is an African American neighborhood. Okay, but I'm saying, it, okay, but let me just also tell you that along with that, because those th those stores and those places and those businesses, in my estimation, live up to the standard of the community in, in a lot of cases. Right. Right. So there's there's air corner stores that know that they can't they can't pull it. Right. And they be like, and it's bright and lit and nice and clean and all that good stuff. And then there's corner stores that be like, you know, they they in cahoots with the people that's destroying the neighborhood. Yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, I, but I'm gonna tell you, Todd, I might not be able to drive through a city and tell you where the, the middle class black neighborhoods are, but I can definitely drive you through a, a city and tell you where the less fortunate live. Right. And typically we. When, when when you look at that in the city, the less fortunate it tends to be. Let me ask a question. Is it the same in the Latino neighborhood? Hmm. Are there, uh, like, I'm, I'm just asking. I think so. Are there, like, bon dirty in the Latino neighborhoods where there's garbage and people throwing their stuff down and all that? I, I'm, I'm it's just, like, it's just like ours, you know. But, uh, as I say, you know, uh, the kids, <coughs> excuse me, help destroy a neighborhood. You know, I always go back to the four corner hustlers. They tried, <laughs> they tried to destroy our neighborhood. How, oh, man? Because they put the folks in the mailbox, uh, you know, trying to force kids to recruit. 
They said a house on fire, man. It was, it was crazy for a minute there. The, dang. <coughs> yeah, I had to fall asleep on your neighborhood. Somebody had to actually leave because uh, they would not take no for her son. So it became so dangerous, they had to move. Wow. Let me go to Tamiko. Tamiko, you back, sis. Good morning. Can we start this again? Go. You got the phone. You got the phone. Todd, Todd I, I, you just won't. You, uh, you er, at it early in the morning. Let's have a roundtable discussion about his and talk about all the elements. Because you do know homeowners' grandchildren are elements, too. Did you know that? Oh, okay, yes. Todd, I, I definitely you. know that. Okay, so um, I, did you know I was a CHA Section 8 resident? And the owner of this building can't accuse me of anything, if anything, he could accuse me of taking care of his property when it don't even belong to me because I care about where I live at no matter what my residential status is, whether I'm the owner or the renter, okay? But let's talk about, I want y'all to put the word transit at the top of your head and tell me the first thing you think about after my other comments. I swear that the people that got the contract to pretty much supply city garbage cans is coming back to steal them back, okay? I swear that there's too many landlords that don't care about their properties. And don't get me wrong, there are other elements that you talk about that my people, that they claim is doing all of this. Let's keep it honest and real. So your garbage cans are getting stolen every week. All you got to do is call my alderman and ask him how many times Tamiko called and complained about the garbage cans being stolen. Okay. So it's a lot that's going on, so we need to talk about it all. Don't make this one-sided. Let's have a roundtable discussion, and let's bring some balance to this conversation. I don't think, I mean, I'm happy to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. I think, I, but I think, Tamiko, you are, again, reiterating all the same stuff that I'm saying. I don't think it, I think that what I saw in the post got me to thinking, like, if you take care of your property, like, you want better for yourself, right? And it's, like, that, look, I can rent. But I'm going to tell you what, you, my rental won't look any different than a, a somebody that bought. And I, I can tell you, at the beginning, people don't know if they bought the house or rent the house. All they know is, is it ain't, the grass it, ain't It's not being kept up. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Eddie, you got the last call. Yo, hey, what's up? What's up, man? What's, what's up, Eddie? Eddie? What's up, Ty? Hey, Eddie. Hey, you know what, man? White liberal progressive liberals they get off on saving the poor endangered negroes this, this, this is like the mantra that they use they have totally changed the face of the black community everything is lawlessness poverty and incarceration they don't we don't never talk about the hard work and everyday black people that are trying to aspire get get their education and move on it's like that we don't exist and i'm gonna tell you what normalized it unfortunately is hip-hop because for 30 years we have had a steady diet of glorifying drug dealing pimping hustling everything but going to school hey, and that's hey, our hey, problem hey, man, hey, because guess who's our, our, our two family uh heroes now snoop dogg and ice cube right you know what i'm saying this this the face of black america but see the white liberals who, 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 who fund all this they perpetuate this because that because that's the way they say that this is how they helping the black. It's like helping the wounded dog. It's that oh now look at the poor Negroes. We'll help them. <laughs> on the debate uh, the other day uh, when they asked about the black community. The first thing out Joe Biden's mouth was I was in the projects. I, I worked in the projects. I worked in the prison. Eddie, hey, I gotta stop you right there, man, because I gotta go to traffic. He, he sound like, like you. That's right. He, he sounds just like you. We'll talk about it more when we come back and stop traveling. More of the morning show with May Jackson coming up. Right, but I think to me, I think there's a point, like keeping them locked up. Did you see Spike Lee got kicked out the, the Knicks games? What? Yep, he got kicked out of the Knicks game. He's like a mascot. How do you get That's what they said. The most popular uh, fan. Oh man, no, no, it says he's skipping. No, 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 he got kicked out, and then skipped. Women in beauty for today, Mays. Oh yeah. I uh, added a couple of better points than what they had on their one pager, so please look at both pages and include the stuff about uh, their spokesmanship. <laughs> spokesmanship. Which is spoken for. Who is the lady? Can I get a list of who won what states and the delegates? Oh shit. 
Who won what states? Who won what states and what the delegate counts are okay. for each of the counties. Okay. Who's the young lady? The queen Latifah. Oh, the queen. I don't know a lot about the queen. Except some of the movies. Some of the songs. Her height and her weight. <laughs> No, I don't really think I need to do anything now. No, man, she's, she's amazed as age. Is Eddie still up here? Is he still on? Where is Todd? It's okay. Don't worry about it. Just do. It. You just produce. I mean, you just do music. Let the producer do that. You are tuned into Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Torch Trojan. Todd, I'm going to tell you, man. Hey, everybody, if you are, just, I'm just telling you. I think we got room for 35. If you want to roll out, road trip today, Todd. Ride out with us down to Springfield to you know, check Maze, out. I was going to go, but I got to pick uh, Claire up at 10. She's not going to Oh, poor Claire. See if you would have coordinated that, we could. She was. She could play hooky. We could oh, put no. the kids she, on the bus. She, she was like, "I'm going. I cannot miss geometry." So she's going to go to geometry. <laughs> oh, but the thing is, like, I hope. Like, what kind of sick was she? She ain't got like coronavirus. Or anything. Uh, no, she wasn't sneezing. Well, Ty. She's so you okay, Ty? She's congested. It's it's not coronavirus. Okay, we don't know what we coronavirus is. Ty. Okay, you're all right, Ty. So this, this, you heard that, right? Oh, my <coughs> You heard this, you heard that, right? So Todd took his daughter to school sick, even at, see, this is what, this is why you can't trust me and Lori Lightfoot on this, right? Because <laughs> all y'all running around here talking, and you probably got off at 22nd Street, didn't you? Oh, you no. probably drove through China too. you know I'm not taking Claire to school at, at uh, 6 o'clock. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, Todd, I'm a little nervous, man. All right, Super Tuesday. But I think you like Steve. But go ahead. Super freaking Tuesday. Super Tuesday. Super, super, super Tuesday. It was super. It, for Joe Biden, it certainly was. It was. Uh, for Mike Bloomberg, not so much. All right, Todd, so let's talk about Super Tuesday. Uh, let's talk about what happened. Let's talk about uh, who won what, when, when, where, why. Are coming in as we speak. Who? Right. Now I gotta put them all. I gotta process them all. So let's start here. Super Tuesday. Everything. Uh, Joe Biden. Uh, excuse me. I'm living in this leather jacket. Uh, I mean, it's a thousand degrees. <laughs> I think you just go through menopause. So what? So here's the deal, y'all. <laughs> Like, the, you know, this is the morning show, right? <laughs> so, check this out. The, uh, 
You know one day when I'm famous. I'm just telling y'all, one day when I'm famous. You're famous for me, babe. One day when I'm famous. And, and my this, children, too. Huh? And your children, too. You know, I was thinking about I, I speak for my wife. Well, your wife was probably like, get, get, get up. She like, don't you and listen to me. She's like, there on tears. <laughs> like, nobody's seen her. <laughs> um, Todd, it was Super Tuesday. Um, Super Tuesday, as Anisha Cross explained to us, was the day in which, how many primaries were held? Uh, 14 Four, states and one territory. 14 states and one territory. Uh, American Samoa. Uh, I think that's where Mike Bloomberg was victorious. If he was victorious. I'm not sure if he was victorious or not, really. But I did say that yesterday. If he was going to win anywhere, it would be American Samoa. Right. Uh, Todd, in the surprise, uh, Bernie Sanders, as expected, did win California. But Joe Biden came roaring, roaring, roaring back. I'm going to tell you, I was at an event last week with Joe Biden's campaign manager, and I'm here to tell you, I could, I pretty much thought that it was done. It was a wrap. It's written out. It's over. I mean, he was just basically like, and it, it just seemed like the onslaught. And then all of a sudden, Ty. Oh, oh you mean he was uh, down in the dump. Yeah. And oh. all of a sudden, I mean, he was, you know, trying to lift us out of it and say why, but he was like, it's looking daunting. Wow. And then Todd yesterday happened. Well, first South Carolina. Who are these people? How come they don't really understand this? I, I must be a genius. Because I, I realized a long time ago, those first states don't mean poop. I, I told you that. I think <laughs> what I'm going mean, to tell you. Who cares about Iowa? You know, I'm pretty sure we don't have any listeners. So. Iowa and New Hampshire and Nevada. It's like 12 delegates and those things. Man, you know what I mean? People and no black folks. And now we got boats. Unless they live in Las Vegas. But, but now you got the boats, so black folks don't got to go to Vegas as much <laughs> as they right. So they be like, that. look, I'm going again. Uh, anyway, so Todd, Super Tuesday has come, and apparently uh, Bernie Sanders is now no longer the front runner. Um, I think the delegate count now is 453 Biden. 373 Sanders with Elizabeth Warren with 39 delegates, 26 delegates for Pete Buttigieg, who has just dropped out and pledged his support to Joe Biden. Uh, Bloomberg, who rested his whole entire strategy, Todd, on Super Tuesday. Right. Uh, how much did 400 million, 500 million he spent? Uh, to only place third. In every race, yeah. It what's up for him? Twenty six delegates. Is, uh, that's, that's not a very good. And so little, he's uh, he's team. he's reconsidering, right? He's reconsidering right now, um, what to do with his campaign. What they say? What they so? Top. I guess that lets me ask me where do we stand right now? Uh, can Bernie Sanders come back? Is Joe Biden now the presumed nominee? Will he become the presumed nominee? Uh, what will when will what will Mike Bloomberg do? What will um, Elizabeth Warren do? Because and then uh, who else is? Oh, and Gabby Tul Tulsa is still in the race. Too. Yeah, she's pulling up at like a point five to one percent in every race. Um, so I guess my question is now, Todd. Question, Doug, is that does he have uh, seven delegates? Hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess my question now is what next? But before we, well, well, not what's next, Todd, Todd, because you know what's next. It's our Black Beauty of the Month. Oh. Check it out. Who is it? Dana Elaine Owens. Now, I want to see if you can guess. Don't tell everybody. Dana Elaine Owens. Don't get, get, let you get, I'm going to give you some context. Didn't I go to school with Ah, Dana Owens? I don't know, man. So, let me tell you. Dana was born in Newark, New Jersey, uh, March 18th, 1970. Uh, she went to Irvington High School. She attended classes at the Borough of Manhattan Community College. Now. She's known as an accomplished rapper, record producer, and actress. Some of her major accomplishments include a uh, winner at the Grammy Awards, she's got an Emmy and a Golden Globe, as well as three Screen Actors Guild Awards, two NAACP Image Awards, and an Academy Award nomination with two million records sold. Quite frankly, she entered the game as a rapper and then expanded. If you heard her jazz album, you'd be like, whoa. Hold on, hold on. Let me see if you can get it. Now, Dana is a celebrity spokesperson for CoverGirl, Curvation Ladies Underwear, Pizza Hut, 
and Jenny Craig. Plus, she own rep she represents her own line of cosmetics. Um, so Oprah. no, Todd, no, you still haven't put it all together. In case you haven't figured it out, Dana Elaine Owens is better known as Queen Latifah. My queen. Queen, she's your Lady. queen. Lady. Ladies first. Ooh, she was part of the Native Tongues. Did you watch? Uh, so if you watch the hip hop, uh, watch them jiggle. They did a great story on her. I can't think of what it's called, but it's on Netflix. It's a documentary. Wow. Hey, but it is Bl Beautiful Black Women Month. You know what they call it, Women's Month, but right here on the WBOM Morning Show, Beautiful Black Women Month. She was in the movie with Tommy. She was in a yep. And just think, she played his girl, his love interest. Yes. Yep. That was really yeah, cool and that was real acting. <laughs> Based on everything we know now, she can really act. <laughs> it's the Talk of Chicago 1690. When we come back, we'll finish up with uh, Super Tuesday. Live from the WBON Newsroom, here's our news now. Whoa, ladies first. The queen of a sister of a sister of a queen of a brother of a... Man, when she broke that down, uh, I didn't... It's like... There's a lot of rap songs that I don't necessarily know the words, I know the beats, and I make up my own words or whatever. <laughs> or, I don't blame you. Or, like, there's a lot of times when I know the song, but I don't really know the song. And, like, maybe I only hear it when it's slowed down, or, like, not slowed down, when I've listened to it in my headphones. Because usually if you listen to something loud, you just bang, you ain't concentrating on it. But right. she did this line where she was like, the queen is the mother of a brother of a sister of a mother of a what a, what I couldn't um and basically she was saying how she birthed the jungle brothers who uh it was it was just a cool the line and what it meant when she broke it down. Hmm. Yeah, but I, we did see a lot of the movies. Yeah. You decide the delegates. You could register to be a delegate. You gotta go sign, get petitions signed, and then say who you declare, and then you gotta get people to vote for you. The party just picks people. I mean, tells people. See, there's oh, really? another. You can run for a delegate without the delegates, uh, without the the candidates. Uh, I thought so. Blessing? I, I thought know. you could circulate petitions, uh, because it's a petition process. Oh man, I should have done that for somebody. Yeah, so I but you, so let me point out another one, right? So the president of the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. Super and she ain't even getting no uh uh. They didn't even offer her a, they didn't even say, Hey, wouldn't you that's you why sure I, she's not a super delegate? I mean, because sometimes it takes a, a minute before they decide who's a super delegate. Why why would she be a super delegate? For her job title? For yeah. yeah. As okay. M W R D president? Yeah, that's a big position in this uh, county. Well, they didn't tell her about being a super delegate, so how do we get to find that out? See? That's Darlena. Yeah, because she's on the... But, see, but again, like, my thing is... Here's what I'm going to tell you. The premise is they really don't want Carrie to get no momentum at all and build no type of... Because if Carrie gets in front of the people, like, in a big way, she's stomping people. Like, she got the package, right? Like, even at MWRD, she's the only chemist on the board. It's funny to me, like, the white folks, but then that qualification, that qualification is, can I tell you, can I tell you, ooh. I'm going to give you an example of what when I feel when people felt like they could take shots like at the at us mm -hmm. right so in the so after Carrie had won we went to a we were out I, I wanted her to I told her she should try and hire a black fundraiser there's not a lot of black fundraising companies one of the people who is running for state rep now so first of all, he goes to a, he shows up to a meeting with her, right, to be her fundraiser, and he comes with a bandana tied around his head, sweaty, coming from and like you sitting down 
to, to land this person as a client. So it basically was like, I'm doing you a favor for even being here because we're going to really fuck you over. It's basically what mm -hmm. he was saying. And we can't really, so at the end he couldn't, he wouldn't represent a black dude, right? But then the motherfucker goes out and starts, in the universe, starts saying, I mean, is she really a chemist? Have we seen her chemistry, chemistry degree? Really? And I'm like, who the fuck do you think you are questioning her degree? Right, like... This is like asking if Obama was born. <laughs> Pretty much. But it's like, you're a fucking young Democrat. She's an elected official. Motherfucker, we don't even know you for like, where did you... Somebody just picked you up and put you on and you around here feeling comfortable enough to be questioning who actually tried to hire your dumb ass. Mm -hmm. It's like, but the fact that a young Democrat could feel comfortable talking to other Democrats about a sitting elected, I'm like, you... Young, I don't care if he's young, old. Right. That's, uh, that's some BS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's like, she is subject... She has been subject to the most disrespect from white folks and Latinos and all. Like, See, think about this. Me. They, they came to a point where people thought they could just say anything to well, me. She, but they can't just say anything to her because they know that's well, right. about me. Yeah, yeah. Well, they know they starting to tune it up. But think about the fact that, like, literally... There are, there's one commissioner that won't even address her as president. Won't even address her on as the president. Board? Yep. Who even in the, huh? Who's that? Now I guess you're going to stay out of your wife. I mean, Todd, think about the fact that Cam Davis. Think about the fact that when Kerry got elected, Cam Davis, a freshman who's running, who had to run in the next election, proposed term limits only on the president. Yeah. It did 100 and some years, and you the only person that is proposing term limits on the black president, and you just, you ain't, you ain't even been at the board two years, because you feel like you could just go hard like that. I don't even know if he's been there a year, but right. I don't <laughs> This was my jam. Yeah, I know. You are tuned in to the Talk of Chicago, 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. That's a sleeper hit right there. That is Queen Latifah and Al Green. But that, that was uh, That's on her like jazz album. Bro. Yeah, that was, that was a movie. That was, man, I'm tell you, she did much better. She could sing, man. She could sing, but you know, she probably had to do the latest first thing to get out there. Because, you know, they weren't trying to hit. You know, she wasn't probably, like, it took her a while to come all the way around to the singing. They saw her more as a rapper. Right, she was, a, you know, yeah, yeah girls basketball. In a movie where, where Ooh, ladies sang. first. I can't what it was, ladies first. Ladies first. Ladies yeah. first. Yeah. Really good. Yeah, but she snapped on that. That was, uh, that's a super sexual, sensuous song. Do you know what? Turn that back up. Go ahead, let him hear it a little bit. Pop up. We now. You are tuned in to the Talk of Chicago, 1690 AM. Queen Latifah, she is our beautiful black woman of the month. And Al Green, what about the way you love me? Mm, 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 mm. Woo! See, that's 
See, they, 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 you gotta play that in the morning. Cause if you play that at nighttime, I'm gonna be running around the house, stalking people. Excuse me, uh, is you sleepy yet? What you doing? You sleepy yet? Hey y'all, this is Todd Chicago 1690. Super Tuesday, Todd. All right, Todd. So I'm trying to figure out what is going on. Let me do this. Uh, first of all, what do you all think? Uh, is Bernie Sanders now the presumptive nominee, Todd? Uh, do you think the party has come together and said? Oh, hell no. Like, I was watching Bernie's uh, rallies, and I'm just going to tell you, they, they seem like Trump rallies. Now, now, now hear me out. Mm -hmm. That I see a bunch of white guys who don't seem to have, like, you know, like, you know, like the guy that seems like he don't come out of his room a lot. <laughs> right? The guy that seems like he played video games all. Like, Bernie Bros. They remind me of like the couch dwelling millennial stereotypical kid who has not gone on. I believe you've uh, <laughs> you've hit a, a, a good portion of them. Yeah. Right. And and so um, I'm I'm just fighting the, the good fight through their computer. Exactly. Uh, but you know, I always think about like the so here's the thing. There's cyber sex and there's real sex. Okay? That's the best way to put it. There's different. And that is the problem with the Bernie Bros. <laughs> I think you captured the Bernie Bros problem, right? Uh -huh. They look at the world through a computer. Right. They don't look at the world through real world practical circumstances. But they are a dangerous force because, again, we don't see them. Because they don't come outside. No. They sit at their computers. They move around at night. I bet they bake cookies. <laughs> It, exactly, and they're outside on the back porch while their dad is asleep. <laughs> not that I, not that we know anything about that. No. Um. So y'all, I, I, so I think if I had to choose, but the dangerous part about them is, is do they participate when their superhero is not in the game? No, they don't. They are classic millennial. Pick up the ball, go home, and go back to their computers. And then, but but not only do they go back to their computers, they go back to their computers and then they start trolling. Right. Yeah. Now, right. They now they're gonna you all, them. and so now if they don't get their way, they're going to destroy the party. Now I'm gonna tell you that I think out of the ch the remaining choices, um, I think that Joe Biden has the best chance to become the nominee. Now, can I tell you, did you notice Ron was kind of tearing him down, though? Ron's What'd you say? He's an idiot. What? No. I, I've never voted for him. You never voted for Ron? God, no. What? Man, I've been voting for losers the last year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let me tell you. I, I've been against all the front runners. Um, so I guess now, Todd, well, but my thing was they were saying Joe Biden doesn't have the infrastructure, et cetera. But now I think that Joe Biden, I think the floodgates open up. I think, man, I can't wait to see what Joe Biden's fundraising take looks like this this week. Because do you know how many Democrats are like, Whoosh. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. no. And so now the big bucks come. Well, we talked about it, I think, yesterday. There's the Reagan Democrats who are totally don't feel the burn. And if he wins the nomination, they are either staying home, but more than likely they're going to Trump. Right. Now, Todd? So now what does this mean? What does it mean? So is Joe Biden now, is that the black choice now? I think that Joe, I think that it is along fault lines. I think everybody knows that it's the black vote, but the fault line, and, I, and I'm, you know who I'm betting on, Todd? Who? I'm betting on Biden. You know why I'm betting on Biden? Because, no. no. I wish I did have lots of money. But I'm betting on Biden to come out of this because... Let me tell you what I think. I think that millennials don't have the work. They don't have the... I, I feel like millennials have used social media to hijack the narrative. Again, Todd, remember yesterday when we went to the North Beverly meeting? Did them people look like they hated the police? No, they didn't. No, they, didn't. they was like, could we get some more? Mm -hmm. And can I tell you what? How many millennials were there? Besides Hans, whose dad made them come. Zero. Zilcho. Uh, uh, yeah, Zippo. Yeah, I guess it was zero. Right? Yeah. So, they're not involved in the political process. They're involved in the cult of Bernie. 
right? They're you know what's interesting? What? I mean, I hate to, to interrupt you like that. No, don't. You know what's interesting about like bringing house places? What? It's we'll go places. And when I tell you we'll go, you are absolutely correct. I say, how's we're going? <laughs> and now be like, Dad, I got cookies to bake. <laughs> no, he's always very good. Like, okay. Right. And, and we'll go. And he'll always be like, I thought that was going to be a lot more boring than it actually was. He he doesn't realize until he gets there and sees what people talk about that, like you said, this is where things actually happen. People are are trying to make things happen like you're doing it on the computer, but they're doing it face to face. And I think that's one of the things we got to do. We got to get our kids outside because I'm going to say, Todd, I would tell you that probably deep down in Hans's blood is politics, right? Yeah. It's just misguided because they're looking at it through the lens of a computer. I, I, I you know when this really hit There's me. Some really crazy people on computers. Yes, <laughs> but if you if they're co-signing each other, then y'all craziness only reinforces y'all craziness. Yeah. I am telling you that most of our young people see their life through their phone screen. Mm -hmm. Right. I was telling you I was at an event. I was at the All Star Weekend, and I'm what the game is two feet in front of me. But I got my phone up, and I'm watching the game through my phone, and it's like the people are bigger outside of my phone, and I'm zoomed into the phone. Todd, we've got to I, – I just think the millennials – Bernie has the young black people who have no real-time life experience. I think those young people who have no real lifetime experience – Aren't playing for their livelihood, so they don't. They don't have the. I just think they don't have the. Hmm, the ready to die mentality for burn, right? Like I uh, let me back up. Right now, like I'm gonna tell you, sitting in that room yesterday, as much sense as we were making about taking your time on who you vote for, everything. Uh -huh. Every single person was like, "We gotta beat Trump," yeah. and every one of them seniors was like, "We're voting." The millennials were like. If it ain't our guy, we ain't vote. Right. Them seniors, they probably wouldn't enthusiastically vote for Bernie. But if he was the Democratic nominee, they ain't going nowhere. The no, millennials, the millennials like, yo, we are. Trump for a win again if they can help us. Oh, but, right. I'm going to just tell you that I think it might be a challenge. Hey, y'all, it's Talk Chicago, 1690 AM. We'll be back after traffic and the weather. More of the morning show with Mays Jackson coming up. Uh oh. Am I being replaced? What? <laughs> Damn millennials. There was a story yesterday about, uh, I can't remember what the percentage of them old is, but mm -hmm. they can't change the light bulb. I believe it. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, they, they don't know how to take care of anything. Huh. No, I mean, I can believe that. I mean, I don't, like, when did you see somebody do it? Like, I just think, like, so many people's kids. I feel like even with my kids, Tanil is really good about making Reagan learn stuff. And I think I was very terrible about, like, like at 10, bro, I could have probably, I probably could have survived on my own. Like, not go to the grocery store and stuff. But if there was food in the house, I could have done, if a light bulb went out, if something broke, if something, if the toilet didn't work, if whatever, I could do it all. Like, I. Reagan, Reagan, does she have her car? Who? Reagan have her own car? Reagan's only uh, 10. Okay. Yeah. That didn't answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Maze, that didn't answer the question. <laughs> you never know nowadays, right? <laughs> Especially Han saw uh, the Porsche in the parking lot last night. He was like, hey, there's a Porsche. I said, that's Maze's car. He said, how do you know? And I'm like, trust me. There's not like two Porsches in this parking lot at 83rd. <laughs> Off of, uh, you could have just said the license plate. I was in a meeting <laughs> Monday, and in that meeting was myself, uh, a, a CEO, and a CEO's assistant. And we're talking, blah, 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 and they're like, well, you know, it's been three years since Prince died. And the assistant said, 11. Prince is dead. <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> I'm sorry, right? And at that, that moment, the CEO and myself kind of locked eyes yeah. and said, "Is she yanking our chain?" Yeah, exactly. I, and and I'm like, seriously, you didn't realize that Prince 
Prince was dead. He's like, no, I didn't know Prince was dead. Well, how do you miss that news? I mean, there's some people who are southern, but... Rago Babo, I apologize. Everybody, Reagan is 11. Uncle Mays blew it. Rago Babo has not forgot her birthday just happened. Who, by the way, I still have a gift for you, Rago Babo. What's that? A year. You can't be messing around with kids' uh, uh, ages. Not knowing that Prince is dead, though. Oh, no, that's amazing. Yeah. Depends on how relevant Prince is, too. Right? Like, Prince is just... Some people would say he's a he's a at least I thought he was a, a person who was worldly. People just you didn't even if you didn't want to know him, you knew who he was and what was going on. So so in the conversation. Did you think Smokey Robinson was that? At some point. Okay, so right for some people, for me for me if Smokey Robinson died, I'd be like, you would know. Them. I would know, but okay, but. To a millennial, they wouldn't be. They'd be like, who? And so all I'm saying is Prince, depending on how old the assistant is, Prince is not, to us, Prince is an icon, just like Michael Jackson. To my kids, they like, Michael Jackson is cool, but, I mean, what's the big deal? Right? Like, so I just think that all that is is generational. Now, because he means so much to us, or meant so much in, to, our, to our era. So I don't think that is, how old was the assistant? If the system was under 30, yeah, so you can't really. Yeah, you got a point because Hans is like, the Beatles weren't that great. I'm like, like I'm, I don't feel like the Beatles weren't that great, right? Yeah, like, I'm not like. Like, what are you talking about? Like, no, I'm not like, I mean, I remember Carrie was like, when she heard the words to help me if you can, she was like, oh, wow, that's a nice song. Like, help me if you can. I'm and I'm like, you don't know help me. I mean, everybody, and she's like, no, I don't. Missed that one, huh? Right, but <laughs> think about, so think about asking Carrie if the Beatles were dead. Like, I wouldn't know necessarily that which Beatles are alive and which are dead. I mean, I'm a music kind of source, so I kind of do. You're right. But like. No, like, either you do or you don't. Okay, but <laughs> like John Lennon, <laughs> I remember Paul when McCartney he died. Like years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Troublemaker, yeah. Yeah. How about that? How about that girl? You are tuned in to Top Chicago 1698. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Hey, Todd. How about that, girl? Who is that? How about that? Yeah. Cash me outside. So, yeah. Todd, all right, I got to ask you. Super yeah. Tuesday, man. Uh, how much longer does Bloomberg stay in the race? Does he get out? I mean, because this Bloomberg? whole strategy was to stay in for Super Tuesday and then dominate on Super Tuesday and then run the table. I think it's pretty clear at this point, as much money as he spent, it didn't work. Right. Well, it got him to third place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, by, you know, trailing by 300 votes. <laughs> the next guy. 350 almost. He's still running commercials. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah. The media, like, you can still do it. I bet, I bet the, I bet every television station and every cable outlet, I bet everybody, look, all, look. Since all, I'm a billionaire, uh -huh. I might think about uh, seeing how far, I don't even know which one's the next one's. Uh, let's see. We are a huge state. I might think about trying to get to Illinois. And get to Illinois, because now what are you doing? But I you're not playing to win, though. At this point, you're playing to be a spoiler. Well, because you, I mean, or or a dealer. Okay, or or you you're playing to have enough that people try to get you out, and then you get to still develop the policy. Uh, no, where it's so close that no one wins the appropriate convention. And by the time you get to the convention, you've got enough delegates to be a player with somebody and saying, all right, uh, my delegates to go with you, F. So I think that, for, but Bloomberg only got six delegates. And I'm just telling you like this time. I think. It's always tomorrow. I think the, get, the big trick didn't work. 
-hmm. Right? I think I think he could not I don't think he could buy a big enough eraser to make black people forget what he did. No, I don't think so either. And I, no, I'm saying, I'm telling you but he Does but, that mean he won't uh he won't have some cachet in the non urban areas? Um, I guess we have to look at places like Tennessee and places that are gonna probably go to Trump. Yeah. Right? Like I think where you see him is he took like to me a Bloomberg voter is a Biden voter who just thinks Biden is a little old. Right? Mm -hmm. Who right? But I think if Bloomberg pulls out the the Bloomberg voters move to Biden. Right? Yeah, they because right, cuz it like the whole point now is this is a fight between the socialists and the democrats and the moderate democrats. That's exactly what it is. And so essentially now here's so I think Bloomberg Bloomberg, like if it, if it's me, I think that everybody starts well, to the shame Bloomberg. As, as Hans likes to call us. Okay, I I think that if, if he says we're he says we're a danger to the world. <laughs> Hans, you and your socialists are a dangerous to danger <laughs> to the world. Let me tell you though, Todd. Like right now, this is when all of the black people with juice should be turning up the heat. Like so, right now, Bobby Rush got to call up. Like everybody got to put the pressure on Bobby Rush. Be like Bobby Rush, you. You did your thing. We saw it. It failed. But like right now, we got some business to handle. So now you don't need to be trying to stretch out. But the problem is, Bloomberg got so many people on the payroll. They just don't want man, that paycheck. Stop that economy. Man, that check. Man, I bet them Bloomberg checks are good. Man. I mean, I'm, I feel I'm like, like hey, nobody want to guilty to call it and say, man, uh, stop paying these people. I feel like, uh, see, I bet you Bloomberg was slick enough to be like, I'll pay you through the end of the year. See. Ooh, see, but if that's black people, you know, I, see, <laughs> see, that's what they they can count on. Yeah, they right. know that they can get paid, and then somebody else can come behind them and pay them. So, Todd, I guess my question is, and then what does uh, what does okay? So, first of all, I think that you remember how did you see the story about the church in the South where the black people stood up and turned their back to Bloomberg while he was speaking? Yes. Okay. So, I think that that needs to st Bloomberg needs to start getting the getting the getting the message. See, cause again, just like, run, just like all, they got a you bunch. Can, of, you can't have uh, people demonstrate against you. That's the group that you are trying to, to court to get you over the top. Exactly. Yeah. So my thing is, like, we need to start telling all those black folks, let the check go, let it go, and now get on board with the team. And I'm just telling you, all the black folks in charge now. Oh man, if we get a grip on that thing. Sure, Wait, but I mean, win. wasn't he the best candidate? He was. Was he the best candidate, or was it the money that they owe? I know he's gonna lose, but I sure. But that money is good. I, you know, I got children going to college right now. <laughs> Man, I, you know what? See, I like. I sometimes I bet it ain't no fun to be. Un it's no fun to be unbought, unbought, and unbossed. <laughs> it really sucks when it's time to go on Christmas break. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Like, <laughs> dang, I should have got bought. Yeah. <laughs> like, at least you could have rented me. Yeah. Right. I could have took a rent payment or two. Let's go to Brother Hall. Brother Hall, you don't talk Chicago. 1690. What did you see? Did we lose Brother Hall? Now, nah, see, I had Brother Hall coming on to represent the dry bones. And yeah. then he don't, he going to hang up on yeah, brother. Kind of interesting. I was trying to see what he had to say. But I, I'm going to tell you like this. Are any, you think any black people are going for Bernie besides the young, the young, you know, the young computer dwellers? Not enough to, uh, to really talk about. No, I, I don't think so. Now, do well, you think, I, man, that social sort of stuff has some good things, but I just, I just don't see it. Ty, I'm just telling you, I grew up, and socialism was bad. Period. There's no, there's no well, if and. Socialism might as well have been communism. It, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, socialism is communism. Yeah. Right. As far and, and I think that they haven't done enough branding or perception. And when, and when, um, it was funny they were saying how when, uh. When uh oh, I'm having a Joe Biden moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really the only problem with Joe Biden. <laughs> I know he's got other problems, but that you know what Joe need to do? Say, hmm. Joe need to be Joe need to smoke one. Oh, and be like, what? did you see his wife? No. Oh, you missed it? What? You didn't see those people rushing the stage? They weren't dangerous, but but they didn't know. So this lady rushed the stage, and she's got this uh, these are people against Gary. And she's got this stop dairy in America. She just runs up there, just runs up, and it, you know his wife kind of grabs his hand and holds him. Then another lady comes, 
And his wife lets his hand go and she stops her. Bam! I mean, she was like, oh, right she was here. like, right, cause, man, she ran here like, look, we got a presidency on the way. You can't be home. When was the she Secret Service? And, and Joe and his daughter were like, get her, Kathy, or whatever they <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, it's time for Chicago 1690. When we come back, we'll finish this. But I want to know, Todd, if Joe Biden is the presumptive nominee, is it too late for black people to get something out of this election? We'll I talk think about it's too it. Late for them. We'll talk about it when we come back. I could, use, I could I'd love to be the assistant to the assistant. Please tell me we got a bathroom. His analysis of yeah. Do we have a bathroom on the bus, y'all? Of course you got a bathroom. You got a big bus, right? Yeah. They all have bathrooms. Do they? No taking a dump in the bathroom, just so you're clear. Mace, this meme pretty much talks about me. It says, the CDC, to prevent coronavirus, stay home. No more dairy. No more dairy. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Stay home, avoid physical contact, contact, and don't go into large crowds. In the verse, I've been prepared. I've been preparing for this moment my entire life. <laughs> that's, that's me. <laughs> no more dairy. Who thought non-dairy people were so aggressive? If it got to do with saving an animal and not a person. Yeah, right. Saudi Arabia. Oh, we're in the back stretch. Mitchell. Who? Uh, McConnell. Huh? McConnell. Who is Mitchell McConnell? Mitchell McConnell. Oh. Well, I tell you, you know, color time, we keep our colors. <laughs> you should just say that just one day, just so somebody can record it. What? what you just said about his colors? <laughs> we take care of our we colors. We take care of our colors down here pretty well. Uh -huh. Our necklace is happy. It happened. They, they get fed every day. Mm -hmm. they, only, they beat me on Tuesday and
Uh, Salim, you make it as though black academics, like black people value academics' opinion. Remember what happened to, um, remember Tavis was an academic and so was Cornell West at one point, right? I'm just telling you how black people would do their academics when they don't no, when the academics I, when I, the I, academics I, don't go with the with the popular. I disagree. You know, I, I, I thought they, they made some sense when they were saying, you know, you have to you have to complain about whoever's in the presidency if they're not doing anything for you. But now their silence is, is as they say, their silence is deafening. And they have nothing to say, it seems. Maybe I haven't been looking in the right place. But it appears that they have nothing to say about this president whatsoever. So it makes you wonder. But even with that, I'm not sure if I disagree with Nate. This takes too much work. <laughs> if I didn't disagree with you, there would be no show. Sure, but you could just be like. That's what Patrick Bruce told us. Rise and shine. Wake up. 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 Rise and shine with the WBON Morning Show. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Featuring Mays Jackson. Do you understand? The words that are coming out of my mouth. The WBON Morning Show. Why don't you? There'll be no darkness tonight. Maybe the other will shine. Light in the night. Just put a, your trust in my heart. And meet me in pair. Red eyes, now is the time. Girl, you're every wonder in this world to me. A treasure time won't steal away. So move into my heart, with your body close to mine. I can fill you with mudlings. I can make you feel so right and and rip it through the years. Girl, I love you more each day. So I promise you tonight that you will always be the lady in my life. Lay back in my tenderness. Let's make this a night we won't forget. Girl, I need your sweet caress. Oh, lay back to my fantasy. Two hearts on the brink of ecstasy. Come to me, girl. And if, if you warm your shadows of the night, I touch you with my glove. I can make you feel so right. And baby, through the years, but I'm what we were in ways. I love you more each day. And you will always be the lady in my life. Stay with me. I want you to stay with me. I need you one more time. Don't you go nowhere. You are tuned in to the Talk of Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co host, Torch Trojan. Hey, Todd. Todd. Ah, I had to let that one roll, dog. I know. That yeah. lady in my life. about this. <laughs> right. Let me ask you a question. Thriller or off the wall? Thriller or off the wall? Oh, 
man. Thriller or off the wall? I'm thinking Thriller because Thriller is... Thriller was too commercial. Thriller, thriller was a commercial no, version. No, thriller, the song itself, is iconic. I mean, the song... The, Not more iconic the than Beat It or Billy Jean. Yes, it is. No. Because, for one thing, it turned into a 50-minute movie. That is unheard of for a song. <laughs> well, can't get any better than that. Oh, my God. Hey, y'all, today is... um. Hey man, I, I'm gonna tell you. So wait, but did you answer the question? Billy, G, I mean, was the Thriller album or the yeah, Off the I'm, Wall? I'm with the Thriller album. You, I think I might be with Off the Wall. I, mean, I, I think I, Off I Thriller. Don't blame you, but I'm still sick of the mind. Thriller was made commercial. Like to me, Thriller yeah, was. I don't. I don't uh, that kind of stuff never bothered me. That everybody likes something. I don't care. No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying Thriller. I feel like Off the Wall was the soul for Michael Jackson. I think. Then they was like, we got something here. You know we can take this boy to the white folks and get extra one. Right? Extra money. Right? No, no. Because you got to remember, what is the first video oh, that had a black person on it on MTV? Michael Jackson. That's right. Billie Jean. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, I mean, but Off the Wall was the biggest selling album in the world until Thriller. Just so y'all clear, right? And I'm saying, like, he didn't go, he didn't do all the extra, like, th th this thriller was manufactured to be a commercial success, right? It was like, they was like, okay, add a little this, get a little Rod Temperton, get you some Quincy Jones, add it all up, put it together, and I'm telling you, we are going to make... Wait a minute, are you trying to tell me that Off the Wall didn't have, like, incredible writers? I'm saying it did, but I'm saying that it was, it was... I feel like off the wall was when they was like, y'all know we could take this white boy, this black dude, to a white commercial. Well, he was black then. And they was like, we could turn him into a white boy. Let me stop. So all I'm saying is, Todd, um, I think if I had to pick, and that, like, don't get me wrong, I almost feel like so much of Thriller was so commercial and they were all such big hits. Like we were talking about yesterday, it's like, it's a certain time when Billie Jean came on, I was like, turn the child. Oh, I couldn't stand turn. It. I, I, to this day, I don't. I'm Thriller, turn. I'm on right? Turn. I still can't turn on Pyt, right? No. But Billy Jean, they might have beat me there. Like after he did the moonwalk across the Motown Twenty Five, oh, oh. I was like, man. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like uh, Off the Wall was just a little less poppy. You know, like I'm not saying there was anything wrong with it, but I I do think that I prefer Off the Wall. Like we like that right there. Don't you go nowhere. Lay have back to, in my tenderness. So I, I wanna know. give you all the lady. Like, like I never really liked Mama Say, Mama Sa, Mama Sa. That really irritated. Me. Okay, that could be a little irritating. Right, that was irritating. Then um, you know, but then remember when him and uh him and they, Paul McCartney, they, they, the girl is mine. But the girl is mine took nothing on the uh, what's the one where he cried on the on off the wall. <laughs> 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 Uh, he cried on off the wall, man. And I'm telling you, he was. <laughs> no, that's uh, I'm telling you, off the wall, man. I'm telling y'all, off the. <laughs> the girl is mine. Is the girl is mine, mine, mine. Yes, she's mine, mine. I You're love right, you the more thing, than he. They, they take they, you they, anywhere. The, the ground there. Cause white folks was busy, but remember then the jacket came with it, right? Like it was just like it was like at that point. It was almost like Michael Jackson became so big that you had to hate him. Right? Remember? There was a point when it was like you just had to be like, okay, if you if you roll with Michael Jackson at this point, you too you you doing too much. You too pop he's too popular. All right, y'all. You know what? I hate to agree with you, but Right. I'm saying there was a time I mean it's so big the, the song itself, I, I just can't uh, but you're right, uh, she's out of my life. I'm not she's right, out but. of my life. She's out of my life. Now that I look at the, off the wall. To like, think for three years. All his songs. She songs was played, here. Yeah, I'm starting to hate all of them just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm telling you. That I'm telling you. That one. She was here. And I took her for granted. I was so cavalier. And it cuts like a knife. <laughs> <laughs> She's out of my. <laughs>
Night. <laughs> like a night. Come on, here go. Hold on. Everybody be quiet. Hold on. She's up. Oh my. Oh, you gotta get the part where you go. <laughs> to date for three years. I mean, Mike put it down on that, right? Who was he singing to? Tito. Mm, oh. <laughs> it's out of my hands. I'm just saying, man. Hey, Joe, uh, uh, Bloomberg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. She said, man, I'm going to tell y'all what, man. Michael Jackson, but I still think Prince is better than Michael Jackson. So cavalier. Who you think better, Michael or Prince? Who you got? You know, what? Oh, no, no, no. Michael no. Jackson is the king of pop, but Prince is a tour de force. The force. I mean, because he, he he composed, he he played. I mean, if he went somewhere, you knew it was a concert right there. Right, and Prince, think about this. Uh, uh, you know, what MJ needed MJ needed a writer, a producer. Uh, Prince would be like, you know what? Activator. Right. Prince would be like, yo, I'm gonna play the whole thing. Prince would be like, I'm gonna play the whole album. All y'all do is stand here. Yeah. I'm record this. I'm a, think about Prince, man. Prince made one. Of, I'll be back in a minute. I gotta uh, write eight songs for some other group. Right, for some other group. <laughs> right. And all the songs that you be hearing now, you be like, wait, Prince wrote that? Yeah. Have you heard the Prince album that they released where he sings all the songs that he wrote for other people? I haven't heard it, but I know it exists. Man, it is. I'm just telling you. I mean, I like Mike. But Mike, hey, man, I think as Mike's shades got lighter, I'm just telling you. Yeah. I remember I got I think I had the transformation of Michael Jackson and when I was a kid there was nothing you could tell me that he he like I believed in Michael Jackson like I believed in WWF wrestling. I get you. Right? Like Michael Jackson, I'd be like, uh uh-uh. I have all the pictures of the shades of Michael Jackson on my wall and I'd be like, That is his nose for real. Right. It just fell off on the side. I would be in the new in the mirror trying to change my nose. Oh, and like I Michael Jackson wakes up trying to get his white people nose to breathe at night. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing one of those masks. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you. I think that we I think like, we did digress a little. I did think we did, but I think that the listeners are in the car giggling. They're probably like, this. Michael Jackson's yeah, I, white I'm nose. I'm pretty sure some of them agree with the Michael Jackson. Thing. I can't yeah. agree with Michael Jackson over everybody. I cannot do it. I can't. Michael Jackson or Prince, I gotta go with Prince. No, I got I'm to. Do. I, I, I'm going with If that. I had to listen to albums, right? Like if I was on the album and you gave me Michael Jackson's catalog and Prince's catalog, I'm rocking with Prince's catalog. I mean, if I had to go around the world in a day? Mm-hmm. Around the world in a day. See, I know all them Prince joints, Jim. Right, because I told you. Remember, there was a point when I thought I was gonna be the next Prince. Yeah, the yeah. dark skin version. Yeah, I'd be like, ha ha. Never then picked I, up an instrument. Nah, no, I, <laughs> I could play yeah, the E flat. I could play the E flat alto sax. Ah, that's pretty good. But I have no idea what that means. It's the middle sax. So, so it's there's not, the, I'm not really small. Well, there's the small. I'm not really big. There, no, that's the. It's there. Yeah. There's one, two, three, four. There's the the little bitty one. I don't know what that one is. Yeah. Then there's the E flat alto. Which is the one? Then there's the like the Clarence Carter. He plays the tenor, ah. and then there's the baritone that sits on the floor. It's like, oh, yeah, right. It's like an oboe. I was like a woodwind instrument guy. You know, you, Claire. Uh, you know, she plays violin, but we in, in the band, mm-hmm. she decides she's gonna play the flute. But man, that flute was just too hard. Can't so get she, the mouth right. It's so just, go, all over. so that's why she got to go to the clarinet. So right? she went to the clarinet. I'm telling you, clarinet. <laughs> <laughs> the clarinet is pretty cool. You'd be like, <laughs> it was like when you was a dude though, like growing up, you if you were a dude and you played the flute, the clarinet, then you was gonna get picked on. Really? Oh yeah. Like I mean, what black what what man in seventh grade is playing the flute? I'm just saying. Nobody. I'm just saying. Think about in that days I'd probably be called inc- politically incorrect, but every dude that played the flute in in grammar school, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. What? And I'm telling the truth. And if you went to, if you were attracted to the flute, like you wouldn't play the flute or a clarinet, like even when we realized that the clarinet was similar to the saxophone and yeah. the fingering, people would be like, uh uh-uh. uh. Nope. Mr. DeWitt would be like, would you like to play? Uh uh-uh. uh. Nope. You could be first chair. Nope. 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 I'll never get a date. 
<laughs> ever, never, never, ever, never. All right, Todd, I was going to ask you this. Let me ask this question before we get out of here. Uh, Todd, I think that Joe Biden is poised to sweep the rest of this and put Bernie Sanders out. I think that black folks, it started with the black folks. He was His fail-safe stopgap measure was black people. He knew it all the time. He's always played to it. And black folks did not fail him. No, they did not. Um, will he fail black people? So now, just think about this. We'll find out if I get a job or not. Well, this is what I want to look at, right? I want to look at, um, I know that some of the pretty significant heavyweight power players met with the Biden campaign mm -hmm. and told them that as they roll into these states, they better get some black people um, in some positions of power. Amen. Right? It's crazy to me to watch white folks tell, tell us how important the black vote is to them, and then they, they have white people telling us that. You, you realize that it's, and we're almost invisible in the workspace, and I'm not just talking about politics. So they will come and talk to us and say, well, you guys should do better, and we're going to try to help you when we get there. But it's not the we as we, because you're working with me and getting paid. Yeah, I think um, one of the things that is going to be this, can, one of the things I want to watch in all of the states, I know that the, uh, some of the guys here have been holding his team to feet to the fire. But I want to see how does it play out. Like as they roll out in these cities, what does Joe Biden's, if he knows he needs black people, how many black people are the state chairman of the committee, right? Like how many black people are in, now you know some of those are ceremonial, most of that ceremonial, mm -hmm. but how many black people are on the finance committee? How many black people are literally on the staff in positions of power? Right? And I think that that's going to tell something. It's like, don't come tell me how important we are. And then have some white person or some Latino come telling me that. Right? Yeah. Um, and if you have it, and I'm going to just say this. It's like when the, uh, when the uh, UAW was meeting with someone and they drove, drove up in a Honda. Right. And they wouldn't get in. Right, right, right. <laughs> think about the fact that, to me, um... I think that if Joe Biden has always counted on the black vote to be his to be his backstop, then I would guess my guess is that his campaign committee staff and people look like that throughout his campaign. I love Simone Sanders and I'm super hyped, happy that she got an opportunity there. But I am saying that it's like it's time out for the one Negro rule. Right. I'm, we tired of the one Negro rule. We gonna get y'all some people to show y'all, but like, yep. Yeah, but like, so in the front, you you talking to us, but in the back, it's like we mistresses, right? When it comes to decision making, when it comes to power, when it comes to don't call the brothers up. I want, I want the black men that's that you consulting to be treated the same way you treat the white men that consult. Mm -hmm. So again. If Michael Sachs is getting treated, getting the treatment, Michael Sachs is not black. He don't rule the black people, mm -mm. right? Nobody rules the black people. But if black people are what you need, then I'm going to guess that the black people that you got on your team better have a pretty big voice. Right? Just saying. Mm -hmm. Like it, It's like everybody come in the room and want black people to be like, we happy you here. And then they go to the white guys and be like, and I'm just saying. Oh, oh, All right, I, I spoke to them. Now let's do some real right, business. Now let's do some. Now, okay, well, we talked to the Negro. We're going to get them some, put them on the street money. Now, let me just take these other $20 million I'm about to spend and go find everybody but some black people to spend it. It's like uh, you were saying about Cicero. All right, open up the book. All right, you take this part, you take this part. And the Negroes. Now the Negroes are gone. Right, and that, look, and they be like, we're going to give you a, re you know, be happy. No. We want, it's like time out. We don't want the Negro deal. No. And I'm telling you, there's some brothers in the play. But them brothers, like, I'm just telling you, if we don't see them brothers direct calling some shots, then... Yeah, but are they, they people who are tied to us or are they people who are tied to... I what? would say that the people that I know are tied to us. Uh, well, some of the people that I are, are tied to us that have demonstrated. I can't speak on all of them. Some of them be operating for other people. Okay. But... For the people that I know that are at the table, and these people are at the table for Hillary too, and they didn't listen. And when I remember being like, hey man, you need to tell Hillary, and this person was like, they made the campaign manager come in and sit down, we told them, and guess what? They didn't listen, and guess what happened to Hillary? Mm -hmm. Hey y'all, 
Yeah, we got to get out here early though, because it is the Urban Business Roundtable down low. Oh, uh, so I'm looking for black power in these campaigns and Bernie's campaign too. So you better tell Hans before he start calling us up with some Bernie bros. Bernie better be rolling through here with black power all over this stuff. All right. I, I think Hans sees the, the writing. He's just, <laughs> he's just loyal. All right. Hey, he need to be loyal to where he eat at. Hey, y'all. So for Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, for Miss Sonya Escobar, the news conductor, the soul player, for my co-host, Ty Stroger, I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Uh, asking a question every day, what's in it for the black people? Meet us at 2907 South Wabash if you want to ride down to Springfield. It's a free bus ride. We got lunch for you, and we'll bring you back. You'll be back in the building at 830, but you got to be at 2907 South Wabash by 930. No no CP time, 930, the bus is leaving. I'm headed over there now, Ty, but I got to get out of here. So before I get out of here, got to at uh, this is the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson, Jackson, asking every day what's in it for the black people. If you don't like it, you can still tell them. Maze said, we out of here. Peace. Hmm, I gotta sit around and wait for a call. And wait for a call.